you ready? Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like you aren't being as creative as you could be? Or do you ever feel like your creativity disintegrates just as quickly as creativity strikes? Or maybe <laughs> you have all these great ideas, but you never actually act on them because of X, Y, and Z. I've been deep diving into these creative problems and I've been attempting to sort them out for myself. I've experienced all of these and I've had quite a few eureka moments on this topic, especially in the last few months. Today, I'd love to share with you the creative obstacles that I have faced and also the empowering realizations that I've come to find. I've been listening to the audiobook of Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. In this book, she talks about creativity as a separate living being that chooses to come into our lives and leave our lives as it pleases. She talks about how we can push creativity away from ourselves by putting too much pressure on it, insult creativity by being too harsh and critical of it, and how if we take too long to execute on an idea that creativity itself has brought to us, then it can and will leave us to go find someone to execute on that idea. This book made me realize that I was actually squashing my own creativity by doing all three of these things. I was putting too much pressure on my creativity, which in turn caused me to take too long to execute on any sort of idea I had. And if I managed to pull through with an idea, then I was usually far too harsh and critical about the end result. <laughs> uh, I've told myself in my creativity, hey, you must make a full-time living from your artwork or else. And because I've told myself this, I've actually shamed the idea of having a full-time job or honestly, any job at all, when in reality, there's actually absolutely no shame in making money to support my life and my creativity because I should be supporting my creativity and I should be supporting my life and not tying the two up together. Putting too much pressure on my creativity and being too harsh and critical of it has caused me to go through periods of time where it's extremely difficult for me to find the motivation let alone the inspiration to start painting pretty much anything. I've always followed through on commission work because, well, <laughs> someone has paid me and they're expecting me to deliver the goods. But when it comes to my own original artwork, well, <sighs> I begin to feel less and less excited about those creative endeavors. In the world of creative work, we like to call this creative block. It's a popular topic that you can find all kinds of videos and articles on. These videos and articles are geared towards getting people unblocked and unstuck using tips and tricks. And don't get me wrong, a lot of these resources actually do help people unblock their creativity. But what about preventing the creative block in the first place? I started trying to make a living and trying to make money from my artwork in late 2014 and early 2015. Looking back on it all, I, uh, I can clearly see that I started out really strong and really excited, but as the weeks and months and years passed, I became less and less excited about it and in turn less creative. I began feeling down, overwhelmed, and full of freaking stress as if I was working against some clock, as if I was super behind in the universe somehow. Ugh, the imaginary clock. Uh, it was, it was out to get me. And a couple of weeks ago, I made the semi-startling discovery, I mean, very semi-startling discovery, that I've been consistently burnt out since 2016 and it's currently January of 2022, so long time, guys. Subconsciously, throughout the process of trying to make a career out of my being an artist, I started painting artwork that I thought people would like and in turn would buy. I don't remember actually deciding to do this, but there I went, 
creating artwork much like the paintings that I saw selling at the time. Every so often I would walk into my studio and inspiration would grab me. I would feel a sensation as if creativity was saying to me, stop everything, stop what you're working on. I have other plans for you. And when I would listen to that feeling, that creative voice, I would find my hands creating paintings that were totally different from everything else that I was creating at the time. These paintings always left me feeling speechless and in awe. And I found that the creating process of these paintings didn't feel like work at all. When I would finish one of these paintings, I would feel unbelievably excited and emotionally and creatively recharged. I believe that the pressure that we put on ourselves to create great artwork, artwork that will go down in history, artwork that people will love and buy from us is one of the number one killers of creativity. The other killer of creativity is our own negative self-talk and giving in to our fears. As Elizabeth Gilbert would say, we allow our fear to sit in the driver's seat. We might think to ourselves, I can't create anything great, so why try it all? Both of these creative killers cause nothing but a whole lot of creative block and a whole lot of crushed dreams. Both of these killers are also responsible for people who have always wanted to paint or be creative, never actually starting. They're responsible for the moments when people feel inspiration strike and so they race to the craft store to buy all of the supplies that they'll need for their project, only to get home stare at it all and eventually come up with some really important thing that they totally forgot that they needed to do and should probably go do that now. These people might even say, I swear, I'll come back and conquer this project later, but eventually find that all of the unused art supplies gets dumped into a donation box or sold at a garage sale months or even years later. Sad, sad, sad. So. I've come to realize that we need to trick our fear in order to get it out of the driver's seat. But how exactly do we do this? I've found that the best thing to do when you find your fear reminding you of all the other things you should be doing instead of painting is to tell your fear, thanks, I'll do that, but I just need 25 minutes to get some rough paint down on this canvas. Then I'll go do your thing. Next thing you know, your 25 minute timer is going off and you groan at it because You've pushed past your fear, and now you don't want to stop painting. So you don't. You keep on going. The point here is to trick your fear into thinking you're just getting some rough paint down on the canvas. It's no big deal. And then you find that you have this, you got it, and you want to just keep on trucking. Now what about the pressure we put on our creativity? This might sound super obvious, but... I've just realized how important it is to keep the playful fun in the creative process. You might be thinking, um, yeah, being an artist is supposed to be fun. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but somewhere along the line, I forgot this part, this very obvious important part. So before Christmas, I decided that I needed to bring back the playful fun that I've always associated with painting, no stress, no expectations, and no super detailed plan for the finished painting. I would just have a basic idea of what I wanted to shoot for, and then I'd let creativity put its input in as it wanted to. So <laughs> I created a painting for my boyfriend for Christmas. He's just so, so supportive of my art and is always cheering me on. And I knew that no matter what the outcome of the painting was, he wouldn't judge me about it. And so I quickly lost myself in the pure fun of painting. That, my friends, was one of the first times in a really long time that I had just pure playful fun while painting. Ever since I created that painting, I've allowed myself to ditch the pressure of my painting being a total success. And you know what? My creativity has been coming back full force. I haven't felt this creative since I was in college. It's the most amazing feeling and I can literally feel my burnout going away and my creative block disappearing. I feel less uptight and anxious as if there's just more space in 
my mind to work with. I've also felt my curiosity to explore the oddities and weird things of this world coming back. I feel interested. Now, while I do believe that this mindful shift and these playful actions have contributed so much to my creative recovery, I have also been doing some things that have truly been the catalyst for these shifts. As I mentioned earlier, I've been listening to Big Magic on repeat because I love it oh so much, but I've also been working through a 12-week artist creativity course. A few weeks ago, my boyfriend and I were in this really, really cool used bookstore in Seattle, and he found a book called The Artist Way, Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And while I wasn't looking, he bought it for me and gave it to me when we left. Such a sweetie. <laughs> but I've been working through the course and the results have been unbelievably amazing. I'm currently only in week five of 12, but I started feeling a shift in my creativity within literally that first week. It involves daily and weekly tasks, which made me nervous about the time commitment at first, but it really doesn't take much time and the payoff has been unbelievable. I'll literally never give up this book. I've taken a lot of courses and taken a lot of advice and nothing even slightly compares to the results that I've seen in my creativity and even my happiness, like the results I've gotten from the Artist Way book. Do yourself a favor and go buy this book and start the 12 weeks. Oh, and definitely listen to or read Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. I freaking adore her and her book. I'll make sure to put some links to the books down below in the description below. They will be affiliate links, so if you buy them through the links, helps me out, but Honestly, I just want you guys to go enjoy these books, so buy them wherever. Even if you don't feel like you're in a creative block, I do recommend both of these books. They truly help prevent creative block before it starts, as well as help you recover from creative block. I also recommend these books to anyone who has always wanted to start a creative hobby, but hasn't because they don't think they have a creative bone in their body. I hate that phrase so much. Ugh. You won't know what you're capable of until you tell your fears and your negative thoughts to take a hike and you just try. Just, just mess around, be playful and try and see what you're capable of. You might just surprise yourself. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section below and uh, hear what you guys think about this topic. I'd also really like to hear if you guys have any other questions, creative art painting related, or any other topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. I'm really curious and excited about getting to know all of your guys' interests, so. And this is a community I'm trying to build here after all. So I'd really love to get to know all of you guys a little more and hear about your creative interests and passions and struggles. I'd also really appreciate it if you would give this video a like if you enjoyed it so that YouTube knows that it's an enjoyable video and will spread the word. I hope you guys all have a beautiful rest of your day and a creative rest of your week and I will see you next time. Thanks guys!